Good evening, Yorktown. This is Supervisor Matt Slater coming to you from Town Hall. This is uh, May 17th, our weekly Q&A question and answer session. I'm joined, as always, with Councilman Ed Lachterman and Sergio Esposito, President of the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, we've been doing these quite frequently, uh, and we wanted to continue doing them as information continues to be disseminated and try our best to provide as much information we can to you, the public. Uh, I want to start with some new information. Uh, there are numbers in Yorktown as of Friday. Uh, active cases in the town are, is now 38. That's an increase of six. We have 579 confirmed cases and 12 new cases. Westchester is now at 26,990 confirmed cases. As we all know, the reopening phase is being dictated uh, by meeting seven metrics that are set forth by the state of New York. We s remain in the Mid-Hudson region, again, joined by our neighbors in Putnam County, Dutchess County, uh, on, on the east side of the river, on the west side of the river, joined by Ulster County, Sullivan County, Orange County, uh, and Rockland County. Right now, again, we have four out of the seven metrics that have been met. Uh, two that are still outstanding, three, but the two that we're, we're keeping a very close eye on is our decline in deaths and new hospitalizations. We did see a blip in the hospitalization rate, uh, and as you can, as I said earlier, we, are see, we did see a small increase in active cases. The way that active cases is being defined is really mathematical. It's uh, subtracting uh, two weeks, so all the cases that fall within the last two weeks are considered active cases. So that is at 38, an increase of six. Um, on Friday, it was announced that the New York on pause order for our region was uh, extended to May 28th and the state of emergency to June 13th. I know that was confusing uh, for, for many, uh, including us in government, uh, as we were getting that information, but it's important to understand the difference. Uh, the state of emergency for the state of New York has been extended until June 13th, but the New York on pause order, which is what we are currently uh, bound by here in the Mid-Hudson region is, has been extended to May 28th. It's our understanding that if we meet those metrics and we hit the seven out of seven metrics as a region, we may be able to begin the phased in process sooner than the 28th. And I want to just quickly touch upon phase one. Right now, phase one uh, started for Central New York, Finger Lakes, Mohawk Valley, North Country, and the Southern Tier. Uh, it's specifically for construction, agriculture, forestry, fishing, and hunting. Retail, limited to curbside or in-store pickup or drop-off, manufacturing, and wholesale trade. That's the first phase as dictated by New York State. I want to say that again. As dictated by New York State. Not dictated by the town of Yorktown, not dictated by Westchester County, but dictated by by New York State. These are the rules that the entire state, every municipality, every county are playing by and grappling with. Uh, the governor did announce it earlier last week, late last, at the end of last week, there were some restrictions that were lifted statewide. Landscaping, all landscaping has been put back on the table uh, and, and, you're, and that's allowed to continue and, and landscapers are allowed to work. Drive-in movie theaters, I know that we don't necessarily have a drive-in movie theater here in the town of Yorktown. I have uh, had several conversations with folks about, about bringing a drive-in uh, movie theater to town, uh, but drive-in movie theaters are allowed to operate. Uh, gardening is allowed, and tennis is allowed as well with specific restrictions, uh, and I'll get to that momentarily about how that impacts the town of Yorktown. But as you can see, it gets, it gets uh, stated on the, on the state level, handed down, handed down to the county, and then from the county it's handed down to us locally, and we implement it uh, to the best of our abilities. Uh, so also elective surgeries, the governor uh, announced that he was going to allow elective surgeries to uh, take place in Westchester County, something that I'm very happy to see because originally Putnam County was allowed, but not Westchester. So that's a, that's a good thing for our residents here in the town of Yorktown and Westchester County. Last week, we handed out 4,000 reusable masks to residents in Yorktown. We handed out uh, about 1,000 on Thursday to our seniors. We handed those out right here out of Town Hall and uh, close to 3,000 
on Friday over at the Jefferson Valley Mall. I want to thank the Jefferson Valley Mall for hosting us. I want to thank County Executive George Latimer for joining us on Friday, State Senator Pete Harcum for joining us on Thursday. And I really want to thank all of the, all of the members of our team. And that's what it was. It was a team effort here out of Town Hall. But we had many different departments play a key role uh, in making that distribution happen. Not only did we make it happen, but it was organized, it was efficient, and it was effective. Uh, and I really want to thank all of our employees and department heads who stepped up to the plate and helped us make that uh, a great success. Don't forget uh, PD for directing traffic. And, and of course, our, our police department as well. Uh, the water department, I have a, I have a note here. Uh, let's see, from our water department, they are going to continue the water meter reading uh, for the town of Yorktown for the week of May 18th, beginning tomorrow, and the 26th. East Main Street and Route 6 from Route 132 to Lexington Ave and all connecting roads. They'll, you'll see our water department out and about reading your water meters. All Yorktown accounts on Lexington Avenue and all connecting Yorktown roads. Amazon Road and all connecting roads. Mohegan Avenue and all connecting roads. Old Yorktown Road from East Main Street to Strang um, and all connecting roads on the west side of Old Yorktown Road as well as Stony Street and all connecting roads. Also, a note from Kenny Rundle, our distribution superintendent. Uh, he asked that I mention that the water bills that are being sent for June may be a little higher than normal because it covers a longer period of time. This covers almost five months when the normal is four months. So if you see a slight uh, increase in your water bill, it's because we, again, took the month of April off uh, from water meeting while we grappled with the coronavirus pandemic. Bulk garbage is uh, continued to be discussed quite frequently. As a reminder, Section 4 is continued this week. Section 5 begins May 26th. The full schedule, which continues to be updated as needed, is found on the town's website. You can go to the coronavirus update page. You can go to the refuse and recycling page. Uh, also on the town's homepage is the updated bulk pickup schedule. And as a reminder, uh, we are still mandated at a 50% total workforce. And we had Kim Anglis Gage, our r, &R director here last week, explaining how much volume uh, we've seen in the bulk pickup. And again, considering we are at half of our staff, it's taking us that much longer to collect properly. Parks and Rec, uh, I know Jim Moderano uh, is on, I believe, on Facebook answering questions regarding Parks and Rec. He's our Parks and Rec superintendent. Him and his staff continue to do just a tremendous job, great, great assets for the town of Yorktown. Uh, we were with Jim on Friday, uh, Friday afternoon, over at the Lower Downing Tennis Courts. We did announce that the town's half-day and full-day camps will not be happening this year. Again, that's the town's, um, and the reason for that quite frankly, is ensuring a safe environment for the kids. Uh, we utilize both school districts, and I was in uh, touch with both school superintendents. They are obviously endeavoring on an entire retrofit project of their school buildings uh, in anticipation of the uh, fall uh, school year starting. Uh, and because of the construction that's anticipated, we simply won't have the safeguards in place to ensure the safety of the kids. And so uh, the town, the town's half day and full day camps will not be happening this year. We are waiting to hear about private camps. We have been in touch with several of those, uh, of those businesses, places like Camp Nabby, Club Fit. Um, I've spoken with the state, the county. Um, this was something that I, I kept mentioning to County Executive Latimer when he was here. Um, and again, as I was say, saying earlier, we're waiting for the state because the state's the, the entity that's going to hand down uh, the rules and the parameters that these camps are able to operate under. Uh, I was watching the governor's press conference today, and reporters were asking about it, and they are making headway. Um, but this is, this is how it works right now. And so we're waiting for the state to dictate what the parameters are for private camps to be able to function this summer. We also announced that Junior Pool will not be opening this year. We do not have guidance from the state regarding public pools, whether it's a town pool or an association pool. That hasn't been handed down yet either. Uh, but Junior Pool 
we began a, uh, a safety enhancement on. We had to demo uh, a large portion of the pool deck, pool deck in the spring, um, and then the coronavirus hit, so it sat idle, and we frankly just are not going to have enough time uh, to put the necessary construction back to work uh, in time to open the pool, if we're even able to open, which is a big question mark. Uh, and so junior pool will not be opening for the summer, and we still do not know if public pools are going to be allowed to open. And if they are allowed to open, we still don't know under what parameters you're going to be able to utilize those public pools. Uh, and of course, there's also a, a financial implication uh, to the town that we need to figure out as well. Uh, as a reminder, we had our comptroller on to the town board meeting last week, uh, as well as the week prior. Um, we are looking at significant revenue shortfalls the sales tax alone, we are looking at a two to three million dollar shortfall in sales tax. Overall, we're looking at an approximate eight million dollar revenue shortfall for the town of Yorktown, which is significant. So, unfortunately, we have to take a hard look at all of our programming and amenities, uh, and and figure out how we're going to be able to, frankly, get them off the ground, considering the financial restrictions that we're facing. Lastly, uh, from our Parks and Rec discussion, tennis, ten tennis camp, uh, excuse me, tennis, tennis courts are going to be opened at Lower Downing and Blackberry beginning tomorrow. As I stated earlier, the governor has uh, allowed tennis to resume statewide. There are restrictions. You can only play singles. Uh, that's the first restriction. Uh, we are working on uh, a way to organize um, court time reservations. Uh, that's something that we're, we're working through with our rec department right now. Uh, but so just right now, it's going to be Lower Downing and Blackberry. P and, uh, and so that's, that begins on Monday. You're going to see proper signage at those courts. Again, um, there are going to be restrictions. Uh, there are no, the way that the governor described it, no, no uh, use of clubhouses, which we don't have at either of those locations. Anything that, that allows for gathering uh, would need to be eliminated. Again, why we're specifically opening Lower Downing and BlackBerry first. Uh, and again, back to the gatherings as part of New York on pause, gatherings remain, uh, gatherings are, no, are not allowed in, uh, still to this point in time in the Mid-Hudson region, including Yorktown. Finally, I just want to end with Reboot Yorktown. Um, Reboot Yorktown Task Force on, uh, I believe it was Tuesday, um, uh, announced two of our parameters that are already into place um, in, in preparation, in preparation of when our businesses can open. Thursday. Reboot Yorktown did not open businesses. Uh, we did not give them the green light. Again, we don't have the authority to do that. Only the state has that authority. But we are making sure that there are tools in place to help our restaurants and our eateries by expanding their outdoor dining capabilities. And we're also, we've also eliminated the associated fee with that. Uh, same with our retailers in all commercial zones, C1, C2, C3, C4. Rather than applying for a special use permit, which is needed to allow for sidewalk sales, to put their products on the sidewalks, uh, we are expediting that process. Uh, and it's uh, going to be reduced basically from an eight-week process to a one-week process and eliminate the associated fees. Again, not allowing them to open. We cannot allow them to open unless the state of New York gives us the green light on that. Uh, but we are putting the tools on the table so our business community uh, has uh, those tools ready and accessible. Yeah, and if there's any confusion as to, you know, why this is going on now with the Reboot uh, uh, Task Force, Reboot Yorktown Task Force, um, we, we decided that we wanted to, as per your direction, set the table and give the, um, the businesses a heads up and a head start. But again, to reiterate, that doesn't mean that you're allowed to, you know, have outdoor dining yet. So just be Correct. careful with that because, yeah, and, and um, you know, it's important not to conflate the two. It absolutely. is two separate things. We do have to wait for the governor to lift the restrictions. Right. At the end of the day, he's the one that's really holding the cards for that. So, again, this is a Q&A. Those are, those are the uh, announcements that I did want to make. Uh, you can post your questions on our Facebook page, and uh, Councilman Lachterman is here monitoring that. You can call the phone right in front of me at 914-962-5722, extension 216, uh, and we're happy to field any questions that you might have. I do want to uh, thank our friends at Sports Barn. Um, we have, I have this fantastic Town Strong mask that I've been uh, utilizing since yesterday. 
Um, as a reminder, the executive order from the governor states, if you cannot maintain social distancing, which is six feet, then you have to wear a mask. And I'm going to answer this phone right now if you have yep. things you want to add. Yeah, I just want to say that uh, we also are giving uh, an exemption or, or, Hi, or expediting the process for temporary structures such as a tent to account for that outside dining as well. Uh, if someone has like a grass area and they end up uh, wanting to do that. Uh, I'd like to, um, uh, I would like to point out, uh, someone had, had commented, why are some restaurants allowed to have customers on their patios? They are not. Uh, That's correct. You know, there's been some misunderstanding. That's what, one of the things we're clarifying. Uh, we, well, we had spoken about the mm -hmm. pools, and there is, uh, you know, right now the county of Westchester has pulled all public pool permits, meaning they're not letting a public permit uh, be uh, uh, activated, so to speak. So we cannot open public pools until that happens anyway. And um, just, just going back to uh, the temporary structures, folks, it's a big deal. The Reboot Yorktown Task Force made the recommendation. Uh, a few of us from the task force went in front of the town board and lobbied for uh, the passing of the, of the uh, outdoor dining. Um, that did get passed, and then we did extend it to uh, all businesses in the four commercial zones, C1 through 4, as the supervisor stated. But, you know, it doesn't just mean that you're going to be able to plop a tent in the middle of a parking lot. It has to be done in a safe manner. And the idea is to create an environment where people are more apt to come out and also expand the amount of available seating that a restaurant uh, can have uh, because what we anticipate is when the restrictions are lifted, and it's not even in phase one, it'll probably be in phase two or beyond that, um, you know, the capacity will be limited uh, for restaurants and seating. So th that that's, was the whole point of why the Reboot Yorktown Task Force made the recommendation and the town board saw fit to pass the recommendation. Absolutely. And, and I did want to bring one other thing up before uh, Supervisor Slater answers that uh, question he just got on the phone. Uh, it has, you know, someone uh, did remind us, uh, Mike, that uh, bulk trash needs to be put out uh, per the regulations. And if it's a mess and, and you know, you have stuff that shouldn't be out there, you, they're not going to have time to get back there. They're going to have to leave it, and they're not going to be able to get back to your house. So please, if you, if you have a question, call Refuse and Recycling in the morning, but it should be on the uh, paperwork that's sent to the house, the card with the schedule. Please put out your trash properly and make sure that uh, our guys could, could take care of it safely and efficiently. I, it was, uh, we just had a, a call regarding, uh, there's a proposal, I guess, I haven't read this yet, but there's a proposal uh, regarding uh, that would mandate temperature checks entering basically any retail. Um, I, I am not sure. I've not been told by the government, uh, by, the, by the governor's office, that that's uh, going to be a policy in place. I'm sure there's going to be questions about this, but I think it's important for people to understand um, that's going to be done at a higher level than uh, the town. Uh, we don't have the authority to mandate that. Um, and, uh, and so that if that's a proposal being done on a legislative level, that's going to be done on the county or really the state level. Um, and, but right now that's not in place. But that's also not a bad idea as a recommendation to businesses. As we gear up and we, we take, we inch ever so closer to opening up, it might not be a bad idea to voluntarily put some kind of a, um, a, a process like that in place for your own business, for the safety of the people that, are, that will uh, once again be shopping in your business, and also as a way to ensure or to allay the fears or concerns of the people that will come shopping. Maybe you'll get more people to come in if they know you're acting properly and you're taking the necessary steps. So it is not a bad idea to just voluntarily Well, I mean, that. That, and that's one of the things that you'll see, um, and, and I encourage everyone to go to forward.ny.gov, forward.ny.gov. That's the website where you can find all this information including the New York Forward Business Reopen Lookup Tool. Uh, we're going to put this on our, on our dashboard, and that's going to tell you whether or not uh, your business uh, is able to reopen, okay? because that's, which, is, which is really helpful. But to your point, Serge, uh, you'll see on here that there are guidelines. So it's great they're saying 
you know, construction is able to begin phase one, building equipment contractors, building, finishing, uh, uh, building and finishing contractors, foundation structure and building, exterior contractors, highway street and bridge construction, so on and so forth. But then if you dive into the guidelines, they provide additional guidelines that are, some are mandatory and some are recommended as best practices. And so that's something else that we need to make sure that we're sharing with the business community uh, so that they are understanding of what the mandatory parameters are once they are allowed to open and what the recommended practices are and understand there's a difference between the two and it's important for the public to understand that there's requirements and then there's recommendations. Yeah, and the chamber is actually, we, we've been working on, on uh, a set of recommendations or ideas to plant the seed for uh, uh, every business. Now, we want to make a comprehensive list, and some of the items on the list might not apply to your business about recommendations or safe right. practices or best practices. But we are going to be putting a list out for that, um, and I, you know, we'll, we'll take a look at that. And, and well, I just, you know, sure this is a great point, though. Going back to the mask, again, we talked about requirements and recommendations. You are required to wear a mask if you can't maintain social distancing. So if, you, if you're breaking the six-foot barrier, you have to wear the mask. Required. You're recommended to wear the mask whenever you're out in public, period. It doesn't matter if you can maintain six feet. If you're in FDR Park and you're walking around, if you're enjoying uh, you know, any of our passive parks, or if you're just running to the store and you feel that you can maintain the, your rec the recommendation, not the requirement, the recommendation is you wear the mask whenever you're out in public, period, end of conversation. What you're required to do by executive order is you're required to wear the mask when you can't maintain that social distancing. And I got a lot of those questions over the weekend, so just understand the difference. There's requirements and recommendations. I think the recommendations makes the most sense, quite frankly, in this case. Yeah. You know, and, out of and, common and, decency and social responsibility, you should just wear the mask when you're going out, uh, outside of your house, in public, just to protect yourself, protect other people. Um, and, and, again, that's the recommendation. But if you're going to be in a position where, like I was um, – Give a great example. I was I went to Bagel Emporium this morning to pick up uh, the fruity pebble ba uh, bagels for my son, and uh, and I, yeah, for your for your son, Matt. Oh, I might have had a bite. Sure, or two. Matt. I might have had a bite or two. Right. But um, but in all seriousness, there was there, they had a you know there were people there, and so every single person there had a mask on, including their employees, because we are required to, since we can't maintain social distancing in that setting. There was no way I was going to be able to get through Bagel Emporium and keep six feet between myself and every other person there. So it was, it was required of me, therefore, to wear the mask. And I got to tell you, I was at uh, Frankie and Augie Z's. Um, the other day I was, do, I was shooting a little promo video for them because they're hashtag open for business, right? And they actually put up what they did, okay? And this is the, this is the responsibility that we need from all our business owners. If you want to get past the metrics, if you want to get open, and if you want to continue to see progress in that direction, here's what they did, and, and, and it's commendable. And I also saw a, a, a great example at um, uh, Little Sorrento's. But at, at Frankie and Augie Z's, they have a, uh, a pickup win. They actually were yeah. concerned in the beginning. This is what he told me. He told me the story, Joe. He said, we were concerned for our employees and for the people. And what we did was we closed for a week, yeah. revamped. Yep. And we, we, uh, we, uh, they put up a takeout window, which is like one of their doors. They just framed it out. So right. this way they got the, the sneeze, the sneeze proof glass there and they have a big sign. It says no mask, no service. Yeah. You go to little, uh, little Sorrento and she has a whole process. Gina there. She's great. She has a whole process of where, you know, you, you line up, you stop, you get out, they, you know, you pick up right. this, this. She's got it all mapped out and taped out. Yeah. Yep. But this is the kind of responsibility that, you know, she doesn't have to do this, and neither does Joe at, exactly. at, at Frankie and Augustine's, but they are doing that. And, and you know what? They're busier for it. Right. And I do want to make People a point, though, them. also for Frankie and Augie's, because I did receive a comment from someone over the weekend. They, are, they do not have outdoor dining at Frankie and Augie's. I just want to make sure we're clear on that. They have the, they have the takeout window. Right. That's there's, it. There's, there's no, no outdoor dining that's there. Again, that's not allowed. Um, outdoor dining is not allowed because we're still on pause, but I just want to clear up that confusion uh, because it's a takeout. I was I had pizza. I grabbed a, a pie from them last weekend. I saw yeah. Joe, and, and I thought no it was a great idea there. what they. I thought it was a great idea what they did. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty well, good. Also, Yorktown Pizza Pasta is doing something similar. Right, right. right. But this is the kind of responsibility, right. and action instead of inaction or um, you know but scoffing it's also, at the. It's also uh, the, for the business owners recognizing 
that customers have to be comfortable. That's right. And so they are going above and beyond what the requirements are. Uh, but it's about making sure their customers are, are comfortable and their employees are comfortable. And we, I, know I heard it from, I heard it from uh, Carmine and Deneen Fursey. You know, they shut down for a while because they were so concerned about their own employees and, and making sure their employees were safe. So those are things that some of our businesses are doing. Um, again, have to, if you're a business, if you're a business owner, please make sure that you're working within the confines of the New York on pause order. Do we have questions on Facebook? Uh, nothing that hasn't been answered. Um, you know, we were talking, uh, there was some conversation about the, uh, the schedule for uh, the um, bulk pickup. So, you know, the, the big thing with the bulk pickup, if you're not sure, you could call r and r it's on the TV. Perhaps we could get the newspaper to print something. Okay. Yeah, we can about, ask them. There was a suggestion about sending out a card, but I think it's just too fluid. Yeah, it, it, it's that, and that's, that's the thing, is we've already adjusted this schedule, I think, three times since right. this whole thing started because of the volume. And we've already had to cancel the second round of the, of the, um, the sticks and the leave pickup. That's been canceled. That was actually supposed to be next week. Uh, just because we don't have the bandwidth to do it when you're working uh, at half staff, and I think we're seeing four times the volume well, that we traditionally do. Everyone's home. But, you know, my, my wife but, but you guys me. have done a good job of putting the information out there. Right. No, mean, absolutely, but look, there's always, there are always people that are going to miss I know. Yeah, it's out unfortunate. of those circles. So yeah, we wanted, if there was you know, one thing that you could do to hit everybody, no That's what we're that would be do. fantastic, but it just doesn't exist. You but, know? Serge, we could have you drive around to everyone's door, knock on their door. And sure, let them sure know. I could do that. I'll start tonight. and uh, <laughs> I could drive, though, right? I don't have to walk. Uh, <laughs> maybe we'll give you a moped. A moped. It's like I'd be like in Italy in the old days. There yeah, you go. It's a, good. A Vespa. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> the Vespa. But elective surgeries so, are allowed to happen now. So there's been that. And, you know, the, right. the oh, yep. by the way, uh, yeah, no, there's Jim Matarano and Kelly Slater do love the, uh, love the, um, okay. Fruity Pebble Bagels, too, they're saying. <laughs> oh. Fruity Pebble Bagels. Okay. Um, You're welcome. Yep. Bye-bye. That question was, again, regarding elective surgeries. Uh, the governor has green-lighted elective surgeries for Westchester County before we meet those metrics. So if you have someone, if you are uh, scheduled for an elective surgery, um, uh, the governor has announced that Westchester County hospitals can now begin um, providing elective surgeries, and you don't have to wait until we meet those metrics or within the right phase uh, uh, as was originally thought. So that's the good news for Westchester. Again, my concern was Putnam County already got the green light to do that. But not Westchester. Well, that's a concern all over. You know, is other states bordering other states open and right. county versus county? Yeah, they're, and they're, and they're, we're moving in that direction. I mean, you know, because um, even though we're waiting to meet the metrics, um, they are looking at this um, and, and saying, okay, you know what? Let's open this, even though we're not there with the metrics, but let's do it in a safe manner. I think they also, uh, it, was a, it was a tri state um, consortium. They all agreed to open up the beaches for. Yeah, it was multiple. Holiday, yeah, it was multi-state. Like yep, and they are going to open the beaches, but not New York City beaches. Right. New York City beaches, they said, are not going to be open for Memorial Day. The Blasio, uh, the mayor right. said out. So the that's place. really like the ones in the Bronx, pretty much. Yeah, but the uh, but the, uh, but the island, beach. Long Island beaches yep. uh, are are going to be open for Memorial Day. And we're oh, we, they are and in we're Long looking, Island. We're looking at our beach as well, correct? So yeah, we're looking at ours as well um, because our undersea, you know, it includes lakes. So, you know, Lake Mahegan, um, we're, we're going to be meeting, we're going to be meeting with um, Ken Belfer so we can begin getting Lake Mahegan, um, you know, ready to go. Same with Sparkle Lake, um, which I love because I live around the corner from it. Uh, but all those are going to be able to uh, start that reopening process. We don't know what the parameters are just yet of what our requirements are by the state or the county Department of Health because, again, we do have to get the permits from uh, the Westchester County Department of Health. But we are going to begin this week working towards uh, opening those public beaches. So while we're talking about swimming, a uh, question came in. Is there an, uh, oh, okay, wait, that's, let me get to his original. Can you tell me when I will be able to obtain my permit to have my pool dug? All of the paperwork is sitting in building department waiting to figure out how much it will cost. Uh, yeah, if you could, uh, I don't know who the individual is, but if they can just email me, mslater at yorktowny.org. Uh, we will have a conversation with both building and engineering first thing tomorrow and process those permits. Though I can tell you that the building department has been pr uh, processing their permits, as has our engineering department. Building has uh, cleared their backlog 
uh, which was uh, which was great to hear. A directive that was given to them, and they've succeeded. Um, they are performing virtual inspections. I, I don't know any other municipality, frankly, that's doing this. Um, and so we're trying to be as innovative uh, and uh, innovative and, and uh, efficient as we can. Understanding, though, that the, when the permit's granted, it doesn't mean you can start work. It, it's going to be granted based upon the New York on pause order. So once New York on pause phase one begins for our region, then all those construction projects will be able to get back online. Uh, but at least from our standpoint, my goal is to make sure that, from a, that the permitting process is as efficient and effective as it can be. Before my next question, could you repeat the uh, telephone number? For building? No, no, for, for people who want to call in. Oh, there. to call in, it's 914-962-5722, uh, extension 216. That's the phone right here, 914-962-5722, extension 216, if you have a question that we can answer. Or, again, you can post that question right on, right on the town's Facebook page uh, as you're watching the video, and uh, we'll have that question relate to us by Councilman Lackerman. Sure. And I think it's important, I'm sorry, Ed, I think it's important that, that, that you reiterate and reinforce that. It's that, because one of the questions the Chamber gets the most is, you know, I, I, can I open up now? I got this permit. Can I do this now? No, I mean, what, what, what the supervisor is trying to do is trying to get everything going ahead of time. Not everything going, but every, get, getting everything prepared. Right. I think is the correct word. We're setting the table. So this way, you guys, or everybody in the town, the businesses, are ready to go the minute the only person that has the authority to lift the order lifts the order, and that's the governor. Right, right. exactly. You don't start a race by leaning against the wall. You get on your mark, get set. Yeah, so it's important to, you know, reinforce Absolutely. that. What other questions do you have on Facebook? Um, this is probably for Sergio. Is there another round of stimulus checks coming out? I haven't gotten one yet, and I did file taxes this year. Uh, I know I still backed up on the paper checks from the federal government. Yeah, so if you file taxes, um, depending on when you file this year's taxes, um, that, you know, you'll get your stimulus check if you have your 2018 or 2019 taxes filed. I think they may even go back to 2017, but there's some kind of uncertainty with that. That doesn't mean you don't get your money if you haven't filed your taxes from 17, 18. It just means you'll probably get some kind of a tax credit on when you do file. But if you didn't have direct deposit in place uh, when the first set round of stimulus went out, that means you're getting a paper check. And as we said on uh, multiple occasions uh, in this forum, um, the checks are coming. They are coming by way of, of uh, in the order of income, the lowest income, people with the lowest income who are, who are set to receive uh, paper checks are, uh, are getting them first and so on and so forth until people that, uh, that qualify with the highest income, right? Not everybody or any income, just to be clear. So um, I know that um, depending on where you are, that they are sending the checks out, but the checks are going through July. So if you haven't received it yet, I believe we had a, some kind of a temporary list of uh, where you fall, if your income level, where it falls, and when you could expect your check. But it wasn't confirmed or verified, so I didn't want to put it out there. Okay. As far as the second round of stimulus, that has not been passed yet. It is something that they're talking about. They're talking about a second round of stimulus. They're talking about uh, perhaps a payroll tax cut. Uh, there's some political wrangling on all of this. I wouldn't hold my breath, um, but um, yes right now there is not going to be a second stimulus. No. Yeah, I, I agree. I, you know, there's there's a huge divide in, in this new stimulus act, and, and you know, it's an unfortunate thing. It, it just seems that instead of taking a, a thing to say, what can we do to directly help workers, you know, so many different things get added into it, and it causes this huge rip. And, uh, you know, I, I just urge all of our federal politicians to please, please, please try to, you know, try, try to just work on the one issue. Don't worry about what they call the pork. Right. You know, we don't, and, we don't but, need that. But I also understand a lot of the concerns for people that are, aren't working or, you know, are set to receive the stimulus check. I mean, this is like, what, day? I mean, we're two months into this, and people have still not received their $1,200. You know, and, and most people, you know, they, they don't they, – they live day to day, you know, they live day to day. Some people have enough to last a week without working. Some people Later, have enough to last a month. But most people don't have enough to last that much. And so it, it's a tough situation for everybody, you know. Oh, no problem. How can I help you? Yeah, it really is. And, 
you know, look, it's a little it's, delayed. I apologize. It's it's, it's tough when, uh, well, you know, it's been tough on everyone. I mean, think about it. If you if you have a family, <laughs> thank you, um, and you have three children or two children, you would receive uh, twenty four mm-hmm. thirty two hundred dollars, right? I know that thirty two hundred dollars. It's not a lot. You know, but it certainly helps when when you got no income coming oh, I appreciate in, that. That and some that families that. have not yet received it. Sure, but right. and, and I'll tell you, just from a point of view of grocery shopping, our grocery bills have been astronomical lately. Yeah. That's right. It's just been crazy. You know, besides yep. prices going up, I I yep. realize that I'm eating a heck of a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Than than, so, than so on a normal I've day. Requested them. So. The other thing too that was a monumental uh, change that waiting. really I don't know if people know about it yet or, yeah, or for I businesses too, and the PPP and loan. So I have had conversations. What happened with the PPP it. loan is um, finally small businesses started receiving some funding from it, but, but then they changed the rules for forgiveness, and it was a monumental change because now they're saying that originally you could go back and and use the yeah. payroll that you and, and claim the payroll that you've paid your employees as of yep. February 15th or whatever metric whatever date you want to set but February 15th would have been the first possible day right. um, and people yeah, absolutely. based on what they were saying initially no, no, kept their employees healthy. on because Thank they anticipated so receiving this money Bye-bye. and and using the money to pay off their their past payroll and the monumental change now is that you can't – you can only use it to pay payroll from the date and, and moving forward of the disbursement when you got the money, when they deposited it in your, in your bank account. That's a big change. It's a big difference. It's a big hardship on a lot of companies that were a lot of small businesses, mom and pop shops that were depending or kept their employees going based on what they thought would be forgiven. Well, another problem with that is very tough. Yeah, by the time stimulus checks came out, if you had to lay off people, you, they were collecting unemployment and the six hundred dollar bump, and a lot of them, you know, don't really want to come back at that point because it, right. it does it's not economically sound uh, unless you pay them that six hundred dollar bump. So there, you know, there there are a lot of problems, later, and you know, look at restaurants, look at places that are closed. It would be much more helpful to say, I, look, I know in my business we're going to be slow when we reopen. Yeah, we're in phase one right now. It's just it's, the it's way it's going to be. <laughs> so million. if I wanted to bring everyone back, that's, you know, my percentage of labor is going to be Not through the I've roof compared to sales. So that You're the welcome. stimulus would have helped me at that point. But I'm already eight weeks since I got it, so I'm, I'm done. Now, now, from what I understand, another monumental change that they did is – it was, first they went from you could, you, could, you could use anything from as of February 15th for eight weeks. Now that, then they said that you, could, you can't use payroll. The payroll you can only use moving forward, which kind of makes sense. But, you know, you didn't sure. say that in the beginning. Right. Because if you said that in the beginning, people would have prepared differently. Um, and so they anticipated that that money would be used. So they said, let me keep, these, let me keep my employees. The, guy, the, the, the store owner who did the right thing would say, let me keep my employees on because, you know what, based on what I'm hearing, I'm going to be able to write off. Now they're saying that you, your rent and utilities, that other portion of the PPP loan that you yep. could use, that's moving forward too. You cannot backdate that. Right. So, I mean, big differences, but, you know, big changes and um, very significant. Not happy with them, to be quite honest. But. So just if I can just jump in here real quick. We had a couple of questions while you guys were talking. Memorial Day. As a reminder, Memorial Day Parade for the town of Yorktown has been canceled. Uh, the question was about gatherings. Unfortunately, since we do uh, live in the Mid-Hudson region and the New York on pause order is in effect, it, it prohibits gatherings of any kind. Um, if someone wants to report such a gathering, I would encourage them uh, to call the police department, their non-emergency line, which is uh, 914-962-4141. But it's unfortunate because it's Memorial Day. We're supposed to be celebrating, uh, you know, the... Uh, the start of summer and also remembering our our fallen soldiers and warriors. But unfortunately, there will be no parade. And, and according to the New York on pause order, there should be no gatherings. Uh, secondly, FDR Park was another question. FDR Park, uh, and I've asked this question of the state, what are the summer restrictions going to be? Um, I'm c- very curious myself. I've raised it uh, with our state legislators, the county executive himself, again, who was in New Yorktown on Thursday. Uh, as well as our partners uh, in the governor's office. Um, and I'm awaiting, uh, frankly, an answer back. Um, and so I know that the governor's office is working on this. 
Uh, I know that our regional parks and uh, our regional parks for, for New York State is aware of this, uh, but it's something that we're waiting on the information uh, to be handed down to the state so we know what, if any, restrictions are going to be uh, enforced for FDR Park. Uh, and lastly, I had a question about paving of driveways, and I, and I thought I gave the correct answer uh, to the individual who called, uh, but it's funny because I just went on to the um, – uh, I just went on to the state website to check my business, the New York Forward Business Reopen Lookup Tool, and it's telling me that uh, asphalt paving, roofing, and, and so on and so forth are, are allowed in Westchester County. So I have to double-check this, um, but we'll, we'll provide a, a, clear in, a clear answer to the public as to uh, whether or not driveways are able to be paved under the current order or if that is a phase one operation. So we'll make a note and get back to everyone on that tomorrow. Uh, since you mentioned Memorial Day, I, you know, I'd like to give a plug for the American Legion. And the as, VFW. And the, and the VFW, but the, but the American Legion in particular has gone out and they, uh, since it can't be a parade, they're going to be putting a, a video on their website, and I'm hoping we can put it on our town site as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and it will be a tribute to our fallen soldiers and a, uh, a video tour of the different monuments in our town for our, uh, for our soldiers. So uh, look forward to, to seeing that. And uh, I know uh, Pat McDonough from, the, from uh, Post 109 has been doing a lot of work on it. Uh, so we're hoping to, hoping to see that. Uh, there's a great, a great point here. Uh, uh, Steve Schaefer actually uh, has been asking a couple questions, but he, uh, we hear a lot about temperature. Has anyone brought, over, uh, brought up uh, the blood O2 levels and testing with a pulse ox uh, meter? Uh, it's supposed to be in the high 90s for healthy people. Uh, lower 90s is very compromised. Uh, so I actually have a friend whose son has COVID and has uh, asthma, and that's one of the things he did was go to CVS and buy a blood oxygen meter. It just goes on your finger. If you ever go to the doctor and they put the little clip on your finger and it gives you two numbers, it gives you your pulse and it gives you your blood oxygen level. Uh, someone who is not presenting with a fever but having trouble breathing uh, it, it, is, it is a good way to check. It's something that the doctors do recommend, Steve. Uh, I know you're saying maybe it's a question for doctors. We've already had that conversation, so uh, you are right. It is a very, very good, uh, uh, good point. It is something that you could do uh, if you could find those blood oxygen uh, meters. I think that uh, Raj over at Yorktown Pharmacy had some from what I heard. Um, I think CVS had, but might be sold out. Uh, so something you could uh, look into there. Very good. Any other questions you have on Facebook? I do not see anything yet. Well, again, uh, we'll stay for a few more minutes. You can call directly, 914-962-5722, extension 216. You can post a question directly on our Facebook page. I saw someone uh, ask for the water meter reading yes, schedule. Yes, thank you. Let's uh, again, to take place this week and next week. Uh, it's as follows. East Main Street and Route 6 uh, from... One second. Supervisor Slater. Mm -hmm. No problems. My honor. Yes. Yes. Yeah, no, it does. It's all, home? any and all gatherings, yeah, unfortunately. Good. You? No complaints. Yes. We were out shopping for some people today, so Carol and I, her mom, Carol Roberts, huh? and uh, Sam and Perry Matza. It's helping out. Yeah. Well, uh, the uh, cat was working. I think it depends on, on uh, I can ask Sergio that question. I can just tell you from my personal experience with my income taxes that they, uh, the refunds came electronically. It was direct deposited. Yeah. 
Yeah, she wanted to check. Yeah, I think that I think my understanding when I was talking to my accountant that takes obviously longer. Um, uh, They're printing like five million checks a, a week or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't have a great answer. I'll ask, I'll see if Sergio has something about income. Do you have anything on income tax returns? If they're being, if it's the uh, check, not direct deposit. If you file the income tax return. <coughs> yeah, she, they were filed, but they're waiting for the refund. They're waiting for the stimulus check. No, no, just income. their refund. Just their typical income tax returns. Yeah, I mean they're processing that too, but I think I think you know the right right now they're they're in they're in the process of trying to get the stimulus checks out. Yeah. Stimulus and I, and check. I think it I think it normally takes four to six weeks for those to She's process. Since March. Since March. Yeah. yeah, it's all backed up. Yeah. Uh, I don't. We don't have a great answer for you, but um, if you want, you can email me your uh, your info, and I can try to track down an, an, an answer for you. All right. Thanks. You too. Stay safe. Bye-bye. I think the IRS is still processing them. It's just, <coughs> they just me. backed up. <coughs> yeah. <clears throat> so, but, as a, but real quick, the dog license renewals was one of our questions. You can drop off in our, in our Dropbox in front of Town Hall. Um, you, you can also do that online, I believe. Um, also another question on gatherings. All gatherings, according to New York on pause, are, are uh, not allowed. Uh, and so, again, if someone wants to report a gathering, do so to the police department's non-emergency line which is 9624141 and then we'll get an answer on the on the income tax re, uh, return question. There's some crazy lady uh, asking about uh, <laughs> if we're going to be giving masks out again. She's crazy because she's married to me. Oh, it's, so, it's either your wife <laughs> or mine. She's definitely nuts. <laughs> <laughs> well, it could have been Sergio's wife too. Yeah. Hey, 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 hey. I think we're, right now we have to do um, we're going we're to be looking at what we have left. I'm not sure. Based again, we, we gave up 4,000 uh, just in Thursday and Friday, so I'm not sure how much is left. But if I'm assu assuming we do have uh, a, a quantity enough to support another distribution, mass, a mass, mass distribution, say that 10 times fast, uh, then we'll definitely do one. But we have, to, we have to kind of do an inventory check first. And that went really well. I drove by and, and uh, great. people were excited about it and I'm very grateful. So good job. Yeah, thanks. It was great. It was a team effort. And, and actually, uh, our, our, uh, our uh, sewer superintendent's wife told Carol that I could bring her one, but actually I have been delivering masks around. If anyone does need one, you could contact me on Facebook. You could oh, call great. the supervisor's office. They've been keeping a list, Perfect. Uh, getting that out uh, to, mm -hmm. to, to uh, myself. I think, uh, I think that we also had a couple of other people that have been running them around. I know uh, Councilman Diana uh, has run some out. I think the clerk's office has gotten some out. So you could let the town know. Uh, we could try to help you on that individual okay. basis so it, it was uh, as long as we have them. So you can uh, try to do that. Um, yeah. I see. Um, Got it. Let's see. Um, Got it. Let's see. I see. Uh, can we pick up a mask at Town Hall again by uh, Carol, the crazy lady? my lovely wife, uh, town hall is closed. Uh, all of our town buildings are closed mm -hmm. to the public right now. So, uh, no, we cannot do that, but we will get, definitely get them Got out it. to you. Um, let's see. Okay, uh, I think, I I'm think, sorry, Lynn, it was Lynn, right? I think oh, Kelly Lynn, Slater is like being called the crazy lady also, but ah. you know, <laughs> if the shoe fits. I can't wait. <laughs> Count me in. Just got to be careful Lynn, who you thanks marry, so much. I guess. Thanks, bye-bye. So Lynn, Lynn, real quick to jump in here. Lynn was, is an accountant. She uh, enjoys eating dinner with us on Sunday evenings. Now. That's who we need, an accountant. Uh, <laughs> well, well, what's for dinner? She invited us over dinner? when we're allowed to come, uh, when, okay. there's, when gatherings are permitted. But Lynn, Lynn's an accountant. She said regarding the, uh, the question about the IRS uh, tax re uh, refund, uh, for those who filed utilizing paper, meaning you're, you're, you're not doing the direct deposit, the IRS was... What the industry is telling her is the IRS has been so overwhelmed right. uh, that they haven't, in, in many, most cases, hasn't, they haven't even opened uh, the paper that they're getting, that they're being mailed. Uh, so there's a, there's a serious delay on, on that end uh, in processing and then, and then providing a paper check in return. And then also there was a question about this, uh, someone, people, some people not getting their stimulus checks. Again, from her uh, knowledge in the industry, She's had similar, uh, you know, she's clients and, and family members are in the same boat, and they're being told there's no rhyme or reason. There's some people that are just falling through the cracks, um, and so they're trying their best to, 
to catch up on that side and make sure that everyone gets their stimulus checks. Yeah, and if you go to their website, there's uh, you know, where you could you could actually put in direct deposit information. You know, you go in and and if you could get past, you know, because the the website's flooded. Yeah. So often you'll get just denied service. It's a denial of service. So so the website will stop working on you. Then it'll work like two seconds later. And you go in and you put in all your information, um, you know, and, and you're able to enter your bank information, your banking information to get the direct deposit. Uh, but it, it's not working properly. You know, it's just, it, you know, none of these systems out there across the board in any industry, any government, anything like that was ever prepared for the amount of volume that they're getting now. And that's and it's frustrating. It's frustrating with me. Believe me, I've been on the phone with people trying to get stuff oh, done okay. and. Um, it is frustrating, uh, but you know it's not. It's not for a lack of preparedness. I mean, who'd ever have thought, you know, that you'd have the entire country, you know, shut down? Serge, I have Lynn on the phone because she was calling back. That website, uh, they they shut it down at Wednesday at noon, correct, Lynn? And so you, they're they're not taking direct deposit uh, information anymore. There you longer. go. It wasn't working anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess it was for some, but. Yep. I, I haven't heard any success stories. Anyone that they don't have for direct deposit, they're going to push out, um, push out on paper at this point in time. So yeah. There's no more, no more requests in direct deposit. That's been, that's done. That's shut down. So. Good to know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know that also brings up another point. I know that um, I've had some people looking for unemployment Got to it. come okay. direct that's deposit. Uh, because they filled it out, yep. and I had uh, someone that received a debit card and didn't realize what it was. So apparently when unemployment insurance started, that was actually yeah, easier okay. for them to, to put it into a debit That's card great. and mail you the debit card. Lynn, you're the best. Then Thank start you. on direct deposit. Right. I think they catch up to the direct deposit. Uh, but you're talking about for unemployment. Yeah, for unemployment. They, they're swamped too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so but, but, but be careful. If you, even if you filled out for direct deposit, if you get a strange debit card from Key Bank, that's actually, that could be your unemployment. No kidding. Uh, yeah. They put them all out on debit cards to start. And then <laughs> I think you could transfer it into your bank, but the, they couldn't keep up with the direct deposit request with. You know, what, what are we in, in the country? How many, uh, is it uh, 13 million? Yeah. No, I mean, it's just, uh, like I said, nobody's system could ever have been set up for this amount of volume. Absolutely. It, it just, and also just wanted really to point is. out that if you filed your, ta your taxes for 19 and put direct deposit, you may get it through direct deposit. You still may get, get it that way. But it's also, it's, it's, it's a, um, it's advance of a refundable credit. So if, you, if for some reason you don't get it, uh, I think this is regards to the stimulus money. If you don't get it this year, then when you file 2020, you'll get it. In you, when you file your 2020 taxes, it will be attached to that. Right. Yeah, exactly. You'll get it as a credit. Right. Exactly. So, so one way or another, you know, you're not going to lose it. You're but, not. But, you're not. Um, you're not. You know, but people want it now. It goes back to what I was yeah. saying. I mean, you know, people, people could really use it. Right. So, so just real quick, just to go back through the um, uh, water meter reading uh, that someone asked for us. I don't think we finished that, did you we? You did not. Okay. Uh, let me just find it. And here. then I do have a question here. You know what? I'll, I'll, while you're looking for that, Ac Acme has closed the recycling machines outside. Where can we recycle and get our refunds? I personally think it's a conspiracy that they keep our nickels and they want you to put them in your green buckets. That being said, uh, I did see, I think, at Uncle Giuseppe's that their machine was open, but... You know, well, there's some over in Peekskill. I think it was Beverage World and Peekskill has it, but they'll only take what they sell. Right. So they won't take all, everything. All, all of them will only take what they sell. Yep. Um, and hopefully as phase one kicks into our area, maybe they'll start reopening those. And then real, lastly, we're just going to end on the water meter reading. Again, East Main Street and Route 6 from Route 132 to Lexington Avenue and all connecting roads. All Yorktown accounts on Lexington Avenue and connecting Yorktown roads. Amazon Road and all connecting roads, Mohegan Ave and all connecting roads, Old Yorktown Road from East Main Street to Strang, and all connecting roads on the west side of Old Yorktown Road, Stony Street and all connecting roads. So that will be this week and next week. Again, you'll see our, our water department out there. Uh, give them a wave. They're great. They're doing a heck of a job under the, under the circumstances, but they'll be out there reading your meters. And as a reminder, per our our uh, superintendent, our distribution superintendent, you're going to be getting charged for nearly five months when you get your bill versus what you're traditionally charged, which is four months. So you will see an increase in your bill because it's an extra month of usage. 
Makes sense. Sergio, Mr. El Presidente over here, would you like to any parting words before we sign off? Sure. Um, to all the small businesses out there, um, we're here for you. The Chamber's here for you. Um, but please, uh, follow the rules, okay? I don't want to see any, anything happen or, you know, just, just stick with the rules. We're going to be opening up soon. Uh, let's stay the course, and, um, and, and we'll have a really good summer. So that's it. Councilman? You know, similar to what Sergio said, you know, and as a business owner, I, I'm seeing light at the end of the tunnel. I see, I see a, um, you know, I see a definite path here, and uh, you know, just just really keep the faith. Let's uh, let's keep safe and uh, and uh, make sure that where you know where we are, uh, you know, we're going in the right direction. I also want to thank Carol for the softball questions. You knew I could answer. And uh, I just see something, Marty McGannon, about the pools. Uh, they were, that was answered, Marty. And as we get more information, we'll get it to you. Uh, but it's in the beginning here. This sure. So last, you know, just going to close out. I'm going to just hold this up one more time again from our friends over at Sports Barn. It says, town strong, because that's what we are. We're in this together. We're stronger when we're together. We're going to be smart. And we're going to be safe and we're going to be successful, but we're going to have to do it together. And so being socially responsible, making those right decisions, wearing the mask when you go out in public, all those things are going to help us continue to flatten the curve. are going to help us meet our metrics. We're not there yet. We can't let up now. We have to stay, as Councilman Lackerman always says, we have to stay focused. We're so close. We really are. I know, it's, I know people are frustrated. I get it. I, I get the frustrations. But... It doesn't mean you should disregard your social responsibility because when you do that, you could be setting us back. And so we have to continue to push forward, uh, continue to stay united, continue to say neighbors, continue to show compassion for each other during this tough time, and we're going to get through this as fast as we can. As always, we're going to continue to provide accurate and verified information to the public. We're going to share more information via social media and on our website. We have a town board meeting Tuesday night. We'll provide more information then. Uh, we have a planning board meeting tomorrow for anyone who wants to uh, participate or watch the planning board meeting. Uh, that'll be on Monday night. Again, the town board meeting is meeting on Tuesday night. And as always, stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks so much.